And we're taking your questions on the Get Ready for the Future show today. We've got one from Danielle in Little Rock. Danielle writes, gold is getting a lot of airtime, isn't it always? <laughs> what are the pitfalls of investing in something like that? Oh, Danielle, thank you very much. And certainly in times of volatility, which really is all the time. You know, I was talking to a client the other day, in fact, in there, we were talking about the uncertainty yeah. around the economy. I'm like, but really, there's always uncertainty yeah. around the economy and there's always market volatility and so there's always going to be ads for gold buy gold so janet let's let's get in there and people say on those ads a lot of times that gold has never gone to zero and that's true but neither has the market right yeah so <laughs> You're i get tickled about that one and uh, we've actually got a graphic mm -hmm. on this to show from uh, February of 1915 all the way through May of 2023. And I know some of you are listening on the radio and going, where in the world do I find a graphic? What is that all about? So you can catch up with us on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, check out the Get Ready for the Future show and you'll be able to see this. And what you will see here is that since February of 1915 to May of 2023, that gold has increased as a as a percentage return 10,000%. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average has increased 60,000%. Mm. So with the whole deal of gold has never gone to zero, okay, but as Scott said, neither has the market. So why is that relevant? Yeah, and let me and let me take a moment to point out on that graphic as you take a look at it on the live stream version of the show that that doesn't look like a real big gap starts to develop until after the 1950s, but I scrolled over it when we were preparing this. Yeah. It's still a big gap. It, it is it, when, when you, you think, zoom in on yeah, it. Yeah. It's like a thousand percent difference even in the early years. Yeah. But you can see how big the gap there uh, becomes over time. And I, and I think that the, you know, the whole thing with gold is I, I don't know that people always think, hey, it's a better investment than the stock market, but I think a lot of times they flock to it when they're fearful of yeah. the stock market, right? Gold is kind of a, a, an instrument that is bought on fear. I think it's even sold on fear. And there's this concept that if we really get in bad shape, and we talk about market and e economic uncertainty, mm -hmm. if really things start to fall apart for a short period of time, a long period of time, if I have gold, it's safer or it, it, it is, it's going to save me in a financial crisis. And that's just not yeah. really true either. Here's what I would say. We don't make financial decisions based on feeling. We make them based on fact. And um, Scott, I remember a while back, quite a while back now, I had a gentleman say to me, when the economy collapses, I want to have gold. And it wasn't if, it was when. Like it was a definitive deal. It's going to happen. And when it does... I want to have gold. And I said, what would you do with the gold? And of course, he was going to get food and water and things like that. And I said, okay, let's do a history check here. If you go all the way back to the Roman Empire, there is not one time of economic collapse when you can find that people actually used gold. Let me use Hurricane Katrina as a, a smaller scale example. It was a big deal to those who were there, but what I mean by smaller scale is it was not nationwide an economic collapse. But if you were in New Orleans, it was an economic collapse. You couldn't go to work and earn money. You couldn't get money from the ATM. The banks were closed. Everything was closed. And so, Scott, if you and I had been walking the streets of New Orleans, you know, through through water that was, you know, up to my waist at that point or, or deeper at times if we were going through there and I had a bottle of water and you had gold mm -hmm. guess what buddy mm -hmm. we're not trading you're just going to be thirsty yeah. because I can't eat your gold I can't drink your gold but if I had a bottle of water and you had a can of soup we could probably make a deal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It goes back, when there's an economic collapse to that extent, it goes back to bartering. It is as natural as just the beginnings of mankind that we are going to go to, we have to eat and we have to drink in order to survive. You cannot eat gold, you cannot drink gold, mm -hmm. period. Um, my daughter, several years ago, she just turned 17. I don't remember exactly how old she was when this happened, maybe 10 or so. But... 
it was one of those periods in time where there were lots of gold commercials, you know, buy gold, buy gold, everything's going, you know, we're in a handbasket, and so you need to buy gold, because when the economy collapses, you're going to need gold. And my 10 or so daughter said, Mama, if gold is such a good thing, and you need to have as much of it as you can, why is he selling his? <laughs> and I thought... You know, from the mouths of babes, because yeah. it really is a very valid question. It, there is a limited supply of gold. It's not like, okay, you're investing in these companies that can continue to grow and grow and grow. You're investing in, in gold, and it, it, is a, it is an asset that is, it, that is limited in supply. So if somebody is selling you theirs, you have to wonder why. You know, if you want, you know, for Danielle or anybody else listening, if you want a little bit of gold, that's fine. Buy some yeah. gold. We just want you to know what you're getting into here in terms of, you know, understanding it fully. And because people think of it as maybe not volatile, as maybe a hedge when the market's down. We've got one more graphic. You know, we showed oh, yeah. you that graphic from really all time, more or less, from February of 1950. I'm sorry, 1915 to 2023. Let's look at just the last a decade or so. This is gold prices versus the stock market since June of 2012 through May of this year. And you see the gold line is gold and the blue line is uh, the S&P, or I'm sorry, it's the Dow Jones Industrial mm -hmm. Average. And you can see just, I mean, don't even pay attention to how much the market has outperformed gold. Just look at the gold line and see how it bounces. It is incredibly volatile. It looks very similar to what the Dow Jones has done in terms of the ups and downs. And then the other thing, too, is if you pick out a, a, time, a point in time where they're going the same direction, it's not hard to do, right? There are times when mm -hmm. gold is going up, when the market is going down and vice versa. But there are also times, I look at 2022 right there, just yeah. towards the tail end of those graphics where both gold and the Dow Jones were going down at the same time. So it's not a it's not going to save you in terms of a hedge against volatility. I, I think you hit on one of the key words there. It's not going to save you. Gold is not a guaranteed safety net. Mm -hmm. And it is probably way more volatile than what the average consumer thinks it is. We know it is volatile, but what the average consumer thinks is probably that it is not that volatile. But again, just be sure that you're making your financial decisions based on fact, not on emotion.